one of the top requests from Teams users. With over 8,000 votes on user voice, is to add the annotations features that Zoom has had for quite a while. Now, these features allow anyone in the meeting to annotate the shared screen. Annotation tools help in collaboration because everyone in the meeting can have input on the screen at the same time. But see, I think it's likely you don't need or even want annotations or input all the time, just at selected times. So in this video, I want to show you a way to use collaboration in PowerPoint to allow your Teams meeting attendees to give input by annotating a shared PowerPoint file. Step one is to create a PowerPoint file that contains the content that you want people to collaborate on. And you can include different types of content depending on the type of collaboration you want. So in this example, this slide here, I placed a photo on it because I want some input on this particular uh, situation. So this could be a photo, this is a display, it could be a screen capture, many different things. And you'll notice over here on the right hand side, I've added a sample callout to show people this is the type of call that I want to be used when they are giving me feedback. And you'll notice here what I've done is I've set up the callout arrow so that it already has a white glow around it so the black arrow can be seen easily on the image or screen capture. You can also set up, as an example here on the second slide, set up a slide that you want to create some content from the various inputs that you get. And this is where we're going to create a process diagram. Notice what I've done here down at the bottom is I've added some standard shapes. When you are collaborating and people are using the web PowerPoint version, it is a lot easier to copy shapes than it is to draw new shapes. And this also means that all of these shapes for steps, decisions, etc., are going to be standardized. This makes it a lot easier for working with later on. And you can also have a diagram you've created. Um, this is a review of a website page design. And what I've done here is I've used some icons to give an idea of what type of content people would see in the various areas. And these are rectangles, rectangles that can be resized by people or moved around. So it makes it easier for people to collaborate when we have content already on the slide. You also want to make sure that you save this PowerPoint file to either OneDrive or SharePoint. Now, if you're saving it to SharePoint and you're having external people, people outside of your organization collaborate, you want to make sure that your SharePoint administrator has turned on external editing of files on SharePoint. OneDrive, especially personal OneDrive, has that turned on by default, but in SharePoint it depends on how it has been set up in your organization. So once you've saved this file in OneDrive or SharePoint and you set up all the content you want people to collaborate on, then we can move to the next step. Step two, is to create a link that people are going to be able to use to access this file when you want them to collaborate. And in PowerPoint, we click on the share button here, and it gives us a sharing dialog. And by default, it may not say anyone with the link can edit. So you can click on that and make sure that allow editing is selected. Now, if you do want to prevent people from editing after the meeting, you can set an expiration date as well. So once you've made sure that anyone with the link can edit, then you, what you want to do is you want to copy the link. We're going to copy the link, and here it is. So it has been copied to the clipboard, and again, if it needs to be copied again, you can just click here on the Copy button. And now what we've done is we've created a link that we are going to use to share with people in the meeting when we want them to collaborate. We're going to place this link on a slide and we're going to drop it into the chat during the meeting. When we're done copying, we can just simply close this particular dialog box. I've copied that link to edit and I'm going to place it on this slide here. And just hit Control V to paste. And the default in, in uh, Office these days is to put the name, so I always like to change it to the actual link so that if somebody needs to copy it or we need to copy it during the meeting, it's actually going to be a link that uh, is easy for a browser to understand. Now I've added the link 
on the slide that I'm using for my uh, team meeting presentation here, you see, and this is when we're going to do the baked goods collaboration. I'm going to have the link. It's going to be on the slide, so somebody can type it if they want. Pretty difficult to type. But the easiest thing is I'm going to copy that link and drop it into the chat during our meeting. Step three is to open the collaboration PowerPoint file in a browser. I like to open it online because it allows me to easily share that browser in the meeting so that everybody can see the changes even if they haven't opened up that collaboration PowerPoint file. So from File Explorer, I'm going to select the file and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say View Online. And by saying View Online, what it does is it opens up, in my case it's OneDrive, and it opens up this particular file ready for editing, ready for sharing in the meeting. And some people, when they open up the file, they may need to select a dialogue that says they actually want to edit it in the browser. But if it's your own file, usually it opens up straight in the browser. Now I have a PowerPoint in the web browser window that I can share in the meeting so everybody sees the changes happening real time. The next step is during the meeting to invite people to collaborate. And we can do that in a couple of ways. This is the PowerPoint presentation that I would have been using and uh, displaying it and sharing it in the, in the uh, meeting. And then when it comes time to collaborate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this link that I know goes there. I'm going to copy it, Control C, copy. And then in the Teams meeting, in the chat, I'm going to paste it. And it is now a live link. I've now pasted it in the chat. Now everybody can click on that link in the chat and open up the PowerPoint file for collaboration in a browser window on their own computers so that they can collaborate. One of the things I also like to do is at this point, once I've shared it and I've asked people to collaborate, is to share in the Teams meeting that particular browser window that has the file that I opened earlier. So I'll go to my sharing dialog and I'll select the browser window that is for the collaboration and I've now shared that in the Teams meeting. So in the Teams meeting, they are now seeing that file because not everybody's going to open the PowerPoint file to collaborate. Some might just want to see what others are contributing, but by sharing this file, everybody will see what's going on as people are editing it. So now we invite people to go ahead and make changes to the shared PowerPoint file, and we know everybody's going to see it. The next step is people start contributing. So this is a participant. I'm going to click on this link that was dropped into the chat. It now opens up the browser and opens up this collaboration PowerPoint file. And you'll notice here, that it opens it up in view mode only. So I can just click on edit in browser. And because the permissions allow me to edit, I'm now editing in the browser, the web version of PowerPoint, which has a lot of the features that you want that anybody would want to use. And I notice that I have uh, the contributors listed here. So we'll be able to see who is connected. Now, if they're not signed in, then it will uh, certainly say that they are a guest. That's what the G would refer to. So now you'll notice in the Teams meeting in behind here, it notice you can see since I'm G guest, I'm on slide number one. So if I wanted to add a comment, I can simply copy this particular call out. Um, and I can say I want to copy it and then I want to paste it. And I now have another copy, so I'll drag that across here and I can change the text. Now, not every shape can uh, have full editing, so call-out shapes are one of the things that uh, don't uh, allow you to modify the arrow when you're using the web version of PowerPoint, but a lot of the shapes allow you all the, the specific uh, editing. So I can change the text here, uh, move items. Shelf 
and I can drag that over and let's say I want to point to that particular spot. So I can do that. I can copy something that's there or I can add a new shape if I wanted to. When you're looking at some of the other items here, here's where we can combine some of those uh, copied shapes. So I can select this and say that I want to copy it and then I want to paste it and I can move that up here as our first step and then I can copy and paste again control C and control V will work. I attach those two and so on and so I am building the uh, process as one of the contributors. Another contributor can also be active on this particular slide as well and somebody else can say oh okay you know what uh, I'm going to add I think we need a decision next. So they've copied the decision and they're going to drag that up and position it right on the slide and you'll notice that you see the other contributor making their changes where they are what object they have selected as we go along and so it allows the different people to contribute and build their ideas into the slide whether they are copying or whether they're adding something new so everybody participates everybody contributes and because the document is being shared in the meeting even those who do not have the PowerPoint file open, if I just take a look, so even those that don't have it open in the Teams view here, they're seeing all the changes be made because I'm sharing that document. So what is the, it's one of the real benefits of sharing that document, even for those who don't have this collaboration document open. So once that is done, the collaboration is done, then we can move to the next step because this point uh, part of the meeting is done. We're now going to move on to the next part of the meeting. Once the collaboration is done, everything's saved because the file is saved on OneDrive or SharePoint. So it's automatically saving every single change. So once it's done, I want to go back to the slides to move on to the next part of the meeting. So I'll stop sharing that particular uh, collaboration PowerPoint file. And what I'll do is, is I'll go back to my slides. So you'll notice that I have a presenter view running here for my slides. So I'll go ahead and share the screen that has those full screen slides on it. So now I'm sharing that in the meeting and I can continue on with the next slide where we're talking about this new position on our team that we're looking to fill. So this allows me to go into collaboration when I need to and go back to the slides when I don't need to. If people want to leave that collaboration file open so the next time I have some collaboration in the meeting, it's easy for them to get to, they're certainly easy to do that, or they can just open, up it, open it up again when I drop that link in the chat again, because there are going to be some times where collaboration includes everybody, and sometimes where it's going to only include certain people. So that's how you can use the collaboration feature in PowerPoint to allow people to annotate slides and give you input during a meeting. And it is a substitute for those annotation features that Zoom has. And in fact, it has some advantages because you're capturing everything on the slides that you can use right away. And this is platform independent. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.